some of us get a little worried that at some point our sweet little bundles of joy are going to be yes. teenagers, but it's not all bad. And I love the fact that you've yeah. always been an advocate of the teen oh, years. I you love, love te teenagers. I do. I do love teens. This is good. Okay, yes. because someone needs to. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's, a, it's an age group that is just not loved enough. I know. It's yes. highly maligned, and it's not always the, the fairest analysis of teens because they are going through a lot. They're going through mm -hmm. a lot of development, mm -hmm. and not just physically. We're talking about their brains, mm -hmm. and that's what we want to talk about that right now. So the teen brain. The teen so brain. It's it, a complicated McLean's, thing. McLean's last month did this whole thing around the shrinking teen brain. You read right. the article. I did. I loved it, and I'm a fan of McLean's for a lot of reasons, but one of the things that I find fascinating was around the research that has been done on the teen brain. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of give a little backstory. So a neuroscientist uh, basically had a couple teens and she everything was kind of fine and then all of a sudden they hit teenagers like whoa what just happened mm -hmm. something like all of a sudden they were kind of making these crazy choices so being a neuroscientist she thought you know what I'm going to go and research about the teen brain so the article in McLean's is really around um, her uh, kind of gathering all the data it's actually fascinating okay, okay good. so but one of the things that she found um, and this is some of the stuff that we've actually heard before is that for a long time we used to think that the brain was uh, we have to really focus on those early years and we got to focus on those first three or five years. So what are we doing as parents, everyone? We're like trying to stimulate them and mm -hmm. trying to give them all these like different things, and you know, trying to kind of make sure that we're we're there and we're we're helping that brain along. And then we think, okay, after five years, then we're okay, whew, good, and then we can kind of sit back. What she's actually finding is that the teen years, and this is something that I've sensed for a long time, the teen years in terms of brain development is just as important as the early years. Right. This is very significant because what happens a lot of times as parents, we're very heavily engaged as kids, and then we back off. And I will tell you, Tracy is. A speaker. When I speak in a schools, classic. If I'm speaking at an elementary school, mm -hmm. I'll have 300 parents. Mm -hmm. If I'm speaking at a high school, I'll have 75 parents. But isn't that because the teenagers don't want their parents to be there? No, not really. It's more of a scheduling issue. Okay. The, but it's also the, the the mentality for a lot of parents of teens is like, you know what? It's too late. <laughs> oh, honestly, honestly, I'm not joking. It's like, ah, Karen, it's too it's late. Over. You know the damage is done. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's not too you late. You need to be present. So that's right. kind of like a really main part of. Of the article is realizing that it is it is very critical. There's more stuff more you know more stuff kind of going on. The second part around the article was just in terms of how much actually how the decisions that we as parents make and this is really important. I mean my kids are seven, so I'm kind of by the head you know you're you're you know with what I'm talking about. But that the choice that we allow as a parent will affect the brain development. So this is very important. So for example, things what they found is that things like stress, mm -hmm. bullying. Mm -hmm. and chronic stress, okay? What it does is it increases the amygdala, so that's part of the brain that actually governs emotions. It increases it, and it actually makes children more susceptible to anxiety and depression. And that's happening in the teenage years specifically. Yes, because, yes, okay, things like excessive video games. Yes. Okay, excessive video games, what it is, it is actually shrinking the brain. Part of the brain that is actually making it, it actually shrinks it. Mm -hmm. So the joke in my house, I would tell the kids, is like, you know what, honey, only 15 minutes of a video game because it shrinks your brain. Yeah. I used to just say this joke, and now I can say it to my kids, yeah, it actually shrinks your brain. <laughs> and it you know, it's for real now. It's for, now it's for real. And my one son, he goes, mommy, I'm going to do 15 minute video game. And then I'm going to do 15 minutes of math because I know that actually increases my brain. Excellent. Good. Perfect. Yes. We've I like that it. plan. We've a great solution, right? <laughs> so you're realizing, and you know, people are always like, oh, we're blaming the parents. It's around parent responsibility. You know, right. I kind of get tired of people kind of blaming. You know, as parents, it's our job to set up the structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, it's realizing that the choice that we make in terms of, you know, uh, with the decisions our children make, it does actually impact their development. So what are we supposed to do then as parents to make sure that we are ready for this vulnerable? vulnerable is, uh, yes. teenage brain. Yes. What are we supposed to so be doing? So kind of the last part of the article was kind of giving suggestions. And Tracy, you're going to find, and I mean, a lot of us listening to parenting experts, you're going to have this like wide range. So the neuroscientist says, well, we should be doing their thinking for them mm -hmm. until they actually are capable, which I actually do not agree with. I love the article until that point. I was like, no, don't say that, because uh -huh. that's exactly the problem. We are seeing parents do the thinking for their children. Think of critical thinking as an emotional muscle. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want children to start developing it as young as possible. I don't want parents to wait for that. You want to kind of do it early, earlier. So that was kind of her sense. Then you have like another psychologist in the West Coast that says, you know what? I think we need to treat kids as adults and give them way too much more response. And I'm like, no, I don't like that. What I like is the middle approach. Yeah. Which is, um, we are the parent. When you've got children young, you want to be a manager. Right. Okay, you're helping them to figure out where can you actually start develop, helping them to make decisions. Mm -hmm. As they hit to grade seven or eight, then you start giving them more responsibility. You're moving to a partner. Mm -hmm. By high school, I want to see part, parents partner with their children. So right. it's gradual. 
Okay. Gradual. It is what scared like, me yes, about well, that article. Is, when it's, I know. When it, beca- when it said parents need to really jump in there. If I treat my teenagers the way I treated my early development right. zero to five year olds, yes. they're in trouble. Yes. Like well, this uh, is it. Should I be wiping yeah. their bum? Yeah, like I know, right? It's, it's a bit much. Like, it's a bit much because there's a lot of pressure on parents yes. in those early years, yes. which is why we have a whole infrastructure you based around the early years. We've got early learning programs. We all hustled to get our kids there. That's you right. know, baby Einstein. It's like you're trying to give them all these resources so all in five focus. years. So now you want to I don't want to do that again right. when they're 17 and 18. And I, I, like, I would have a problem with jumping in there and playing too much of a role because then don't you have the kid that's going to work with their parent right. in tow, right. trying to negotiate right. their salary? Well, this is where the whole thing is around taking research and then trying to take it in it to a practical level. Right. You know, and you know, for all parents listening, everyone's trying to figure out their parenting philosophy. What yeah. you want to do is figure out, here's my suggestion. Find one or two parenting experts or parents or relatives that you think, I love how they parent. I like their philosophy. Yeah. And talk these things out. Have a couple of people that you can kind of really go to, because otherwise what's going to happen, people get overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. You're, we're hearing about all these different kind of philosophies and our head is spinning and then we don't really know with what to do. You need to have your parenting philosophy and then your strategies kind of line up. Yeah, I usually tune it all out. Or you could do Tracy's yeah, approach. Yeah, <laughs> I do. You know, I, I found parenting books were so but stressful for me but Tracy, when I had the, when they were intuitive. young. So I kind of, I yeah. really stand back and I read some of the information, mm-hmm. but really it is. It's down to whose kids are doing okay and thriving and can I get some advice from them? Mm-hmm. That's what it comes down mm-hmm. to, right? Mm-hmm. All right, thank you for that information. It's so cool. Let's go to break. We've got more coming up. <laughs>